nobody in there? Who's in here? Oh my gosh, and I saw it from across the street. So did he? No one's in here? Yeah, everybody saw it. No, someone's in here. Bro. No, because Sylvia was the oh, last person. Is anybody in here? What's going on, my paranormal people? Welcome to our very, very first trip flashback. And in this first episode, we are heading to a place that we investigated about eight years ago. As of this date, obviously, it's January 31st, 2020. But eight years ago, we investigated this place, and I've been meaning to go back. In fact, I mentioned it because I ran across the current building on my previous investigation and I'll go ahead and provide a link on here. Why don't you come along with us as we go back in time and check out what's currently going on and uh, we'll do some commentary on some of the old footage. So come along with us as we head out to Tressy Southern Kitchen in Magnolia, Texas. Magnolia, Texas, a small charming railroad town about 46 miles northwest of downtown Houston and a hop and a skip from the woodlands in Conroe. The area first settled in the late 1840s and was originally named Mink's Prairie, later shortened to Mink around 1885. The name officially changed to Magnolia on July 28, 1903 and was named after the magnolia trees which grew in the area. Besides the growing number of great places to visit, eat and drink, it's right down the road where they hold the annual Texas Renaissance Festival every year. So I'm going to provide a link below if you want to learn more about the history of Magnolia, Texas. But here we are back in the building that used to be the Magnolia Bar and Grill when we investigated eight years ago. It is now Tressie's Southern Kitchen. And uh, we're about to go meet up with Nicole and David. And they're going to walk us through and let us know what is currently going on and even the whole renovation that took place in here. So they're going to show us around and tell us some of the uh, paranormal experiences that they are currently having here. So come along. Let's go check it out. <laughs> I'm the GM, my name is David. I, it was prior to us being open, uh -huh. so there was really nothing that you see in here now. All the furniture was here, the chairs were here, the tables were here, but they were kind of stacked over in the corner, so there wasn't a lot in the building. None of these curtains were on any of the w windows. Um, I always parked in that stall that is to the right of the dumpster, uh -huh. um, and so when I, typically every day when I left, I would back my truck up to this window um, the chef had already left, so I was the only person on the property at that point. And when I was backing up to this window, it appeared that somebody was standing here. I in no way could tell male, female, or anything like that. It just looked like a figure wearing what I would say would be like a white t-shirt, like a, Wayne, a Hanes white t-shirt, standing about where we are now. It startled me to the point where I turned my truck around. It was covered in goosebumps, like head to toe. Uh, called the executive chef. He had been gone probably 10, 15 minutes. It was basically like, pretty sure I just saw the ghost and uh, I'm leaving now for the day. Um, he made the comment, there's a neon, uh, almost like the Pac-Man ghost from the game. There's a little neon sign down there. Um, that's been in the building almost since day one. 
because of the ghost stories. Yeah. Matt's comment was kind of like, well, it's he's probably not, he or she is probably not too keen that we're mocking it with a neon ghost sign. And what I've read online is that it's a male that has no connection to the home. He'd ever lived here. He didn't die here. He didn't get murdered here or anything like that. Um, but any of the guests that I talked to claim it's a female. Yeah. Uh, Hodges Collision across the street. There's a gentleman that's worked there 16 years. He kind of gave me a story that there was a family when this house was located down Nickel Sawmill that there was a family with two young children and the parents would drive by this yellow house and they would always point up to the top window which is now our office and say there's a witch that lives up in that house he said that's kind of where that story started because then what did the kids do they go to school they tell all their friends and then it a rumor spreads a couple of the cooks that have worked here when it was a previous restaurant and have more detailed stories uh, our bartender Nicole lived in this house when in, I think in 2001 uh, when it was located down the street, so she'll have some stories. But I've heard also that it's there's no ill will. It's not it's not a you know, haunting per se. It's a, a friendly ghost if you can say that. It's just so, and it's a it's a historical building. It's over 100 years old. That's it's always been known as the Yellow House. That's why we we the, by the city we had to keep it yellow. We we did we were able to repaint it. And we were able to. Uh, pick a shade of yellow, but the city, because it's a historical landmark, we did have to, we do own it. Um, trustees owns it, but we did have to keep it yellow. I'm Kyle. Um, I, w I work at Trustees. I'm a waiter. Notice every few, every once in a while, the light will kick on in the bathroom when I'm doing a uh, night shift. Uh, this light senses, senses motion, so every time something moves or something, the light will kick on. Notice a few times the door would be open about this much, even though I closed it just about a crack. The light would be on, and by the time I walk back, it's just like when I go upstairs. Uh, there's always kids laughing and stuff. Like I know there's elementary school and stuff over there, but it'd be nighttime and there's kids laughing, playing. It sounds like they're having a good time. But like when I go back downstairs to double check see if there's kids here, there's nobody here. It's just just weird shit happens. Uh, the various things so the chef doesn't uh chef matt doesn't really believe in all of it he just kind of is like eh, but when i saw that i it, it, it was more than just a, a reflection or something like that like i felt inside my body that i saw it i mean like like I said, that's, I was, that's pretty free yeah so it was but it was cool so <laughs> Regardless, my compliments to the chef, man, the food is really good. I can tell you right now, man, I had the grilled cheese and that was awesome. Awesome. I, I would come back just for the grilled cheese. Ghost or not, I would come back just for that. So thank you, David. Yes, sir. It. My pleasure. Wow, guys, what an awesome trip flashback that was to revisit the place that we investigated eight years ago and to see the awesome job they did renovating the place man they did an incredible job the place is beautiful they have a deck patio I mean that's that is cool in and of itself but the food is also just as incredible man I had the uh, deviled eggs as an appetizer which was exquisite the grilled cheese was awesome man it hit the spot right behind the uh, restaurant there's a stroll way that extends pretty far out hey there's nothing wrong with uh building up an appetite before you go get your grub on unfortunately nicole she had to leave in an emergency and i couldn't get her interview off of her but i hear she's got some awesome experiences especially since she grew up in the old place when it used to be further down as david had mentioned but uh, I'd like to thank everybody, uh, David, the manager, Kyle, the waiter. In fact, everybody who helped me out. Uh, Casey was the bartender who served me. The hospitality was amazing. Thank you guys. I strongly re recommend you guys make your way out to Magnolia, Texas and hit Tressie's Southern Kitchen. Man, you won't regret it. The food is awesome. The stories are incredible. In fact, me and my boy Rodney, we met up right down the road at Lone Pint Brewery and we sat down and we did a trip flashback commentary on some of the old footage. So here you go. Check it out. Hope you enjoy. Yes, there was something.
behind you. Oh my gosh, and they just flew. Behind who? Behind Amy. Behind behind well, I just saw Was that me? Behind no. Me. But not behind me. No, it was this right way. where I just stood yeah. up, right, right where you just pointed it. But not behind All right, so, oh, and by the way, I'm here with my homeboy, Rodney. Now, he wasn't there during that investigation, but he's going to help me review some of the uh, some yeah. of the footage that we caught that night uh, investigating the old Magnolia restaurant. So, the first clip, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little light anomaly. Uh, it's a little vague, it's a little dim. Really, if you ask me, it could be anything. I included it in the footage anyway because at the time we couldn't explain it, but I'm not saying it's anything paranormal. Right. right. Uh, it, it's it's weird. It just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Uh, it could have been something reflective. I don't know. What, what what do you think? That's what I was thinking. It was probably something reflective, but pretty much pitch black everywhere else, and it just pops up. And your the camera. I noticed when your camera's moving. Yeah. It's going back to that same spot and stuff, and there is no reflection when you ever go back to it. Yeah. So if it was a reflection, no matter how many times you go by, you're gonna get that same type of reflection. That was just that one time. And, and the light did have movement, like it was kind of going did. down. It did. So uh, I mean, take it for what it is. I don't know if it's paranormal or not. I thought it was pretty interesting, but anyway, let's go to the next clip. So check it out. Okay, so now that was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was. It was a disembodied cry that, that was heard. The cold spot, I remember that night, it was kind of chilly outside. Yeah. So yeah. I think some of the uh, the coldness may have just been seeping into the house. Maybe insulation wasn't yeah. great, you know. So it was kind of chilly outside. Uh, the cold spot could have been explained by that. But the, uh, the, the, the that cry. disembodied cry. The cry. Okay. This is what I heard was a, you know, like a little kid's. Out. And you know, you might want to use headphones too to, to listen to it uh, and hear a little clearer. But also, we got to uh, put things into perspective uh, of what was going on that night. Uh, they were expecting us there and they threw uh, a nice little party for us that night. So they had a bonfire and an open bar across the street from there. Could it have been that? It probably could have. Uh, by that time, the party hadn't really kicked off yet because we were still in the middle of the investigation. But I know the restaurant had already closed down, which is why we were investigating. Mm -hmm. Maybe people started the party early. It could be. Maybe. But I'll leave it up to you. Uh, is it a disembodied cry or is it something from the outside? Put some headphones on, listen to it, and uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Let's move on to the next clip. Oh, did you jump? The K2, do we have something? I'm the K2, the K2 motion. Yeah, K2 went off. Oh, go dark. Just don't move the chair, but if you do, she's sitting in that chair. Miss Maggie, are you here with us? She's definitely here. I feel her. I do too. Okay, it's cool. Go right here. Then it is lower. Yeah. 
was it? Was the ice okay. It's the only one in the pot. That's the only one in the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or was it the ice machine? Yeah. I know the ice machine. Was it the ice machine? No, that was a We have an ice machine. Wait, did, did you hear that? Did it sound like the ice machine? No. I didn't really hear it. The ice machine is really loud. Yeah, yeah. it sounded like a pot that pot or a pan. It sounded like a pot. Yeah, it did. Okay, you're right there beside her. Very cool right there. So, uh, that sound was pretty loud. Yeah. I, I remember it too. In fact, we heard a couple of things that led up to that where I was started filming uh, outside the hallway. At the time, we said it sounded like pans moving, pans rattling, or, or like it was a pretty loud sound. Now, when I stop and think about it, I could say, was it the ice machine? Yeah. I guess it could be the ice machine, but it was pretty loud I mean it was loud yeah also keep in mind too like uh, I had mentioned earlier the ice machines are on a timer they make ice and you're gonna hear that same sound periodically throughout the night yeah. throughout your investigation and um, we didn't hear and you didn't hear it was just the one time just thing. that one so, time yeah unless somebody ran back there and turned it off but I don't yeah I, everybody I don't, was accounted for I don't think that happened and, and like I said loud Damn. you know you, you can hear it on here I think I enhanced the audio a little bit at the time when I first edited but not by much I mean it was really loud and it sounded like something moved uh, downstairs which is pretty crazy uh, again I don't know if it was paranormal or not so hey take it for what it's worth it was pretty loud it was pretty freaky but anyway so let's go into the next clip and uh, let's let's check it out Everybody, uh, ignore the uh, rock and roll, rock and roll bingo that's going on behind us. But anyway, in that clip, I remember that clip. We had made our way downstairs, and we were hearing throughout the kitchen. Now, there's a lot of noises in the kitchen. The noises that we were chasing could have been anything. It really could have. But you hear a door open. I mean, and it sounds pretty loud. It's definitely a door opening. You hear the, the squeaking, the creaking noise. Could it have been somebody else walking around? Maybe. And, and that's one thing that's important to keep yeah. in mind is to keep your group together. Yes. You want to make sure that all those sounds are, you know where they're coming from. So we right. won't assume that it's just somebody else walking around or right. if it was paranormal or not. Because, you know, if there's a doubt, throw it out. At Ghost Hunters, you said, exactly. say that, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But uh, after we heard the door squeak and we were going to go find out where it was coming from, right next to me, I heard that loud uh, uh -huh. knock. And, and literally nobody was there. There was, and that I can actually tell you for certain, there was nobody else there. Uh, and it was a pretty loud knock. Uh, it, it actually felt like somebody was there next to me, which is pretty crazy. But uh, you know, all in all, we had some weird things that happened uh, that night. Uh, it wasn't an overly uh, active night. Uh, just these things here that seemed pretty interesting. But there was one more thing that happened here towards the end that got everybody excited. Unfortunately, well, check it out, and, and I'll tell you why we didn't get too excited after. Check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sure there ain't nobody in Nobody's there? over there? Yet? That's right, she's going to check right now. There's nobody in there. Is nobody in there? Who's in the house? Nobody. Nobody. No, somebody in the house. Who's in here? Oh my gosh, and I saw it from across the street. So did he. No one's yeah, in here. Yeah, everybody saw it. No, someone's in here. Bro. No, because Sylvia was the last oh, person. Shh. 
Is anybody in here? If somebody's in here making noise for us, if you turn on that light, can you turn another light on in here? No fucking way. Are you kidding me? Remember, I just told you no that. way, yep. Yeah. He saw the light go on, he's like, no shit. Him. He even asked us, he's like, are we done? Because they're turning the lights on. Wow. Wow. Trying to do this. If they did it, they went out the back door. They're not in the house. Is the door locked? The back door locked? Oh shit! You know, you scared me. You know, we're trying to figure out if somebody went out the back. I did. Because the porch light came on by itself. Oh, I didn't turn the light on. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe. That's why I asked you, hey, who's in the house? Because yeah. it's, it's on. No, you, 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 did. you did. And I saw the light come on. That's when I said, oh no, we've got four or five hours. Wow. That is crazy, dude. That is crazy. And look, this switch, it's, yeah. it's yeah, solid. It's like yeah. solid. Yeah. There's no way that could. Come on. It, it, it takes oh. actual force to turn Who are we waiting on? on? So we can get out and see if it happens again. Yeah. Okay, come on. Come on, leave it alone. Let's go back. That was crazy. Wasn't it? Wow. There's nobody in there. There's, There's nobody, nobody in there. there. Well, the Darn. Let's leave the we lights turned off. <laughs> well, before, we huh? wanted a sign. <laughs> there it was. Yeah, we got it. The porch light fiasco. Now, I don't know if my good friend Mel remembers this. In fact, I don't even know if she remembers much that night because like I had mentioned before, there was a party going on that they that these people had thrown for us. After we did an investigation, for the most part, they had a bonfire and a full bar. We went across the street and had a few drinks and we were feeling pretty good. And then the porch light turned on, which everybody thought turned on by itself. We thought the whole crew was out and it kind of freaked us out and we were all excited. So we got our cameras, we ran in there, started saying, hey, is anybody in here? Blah, blah, blah. And then it's so funny because then I see Mel walking in through the back door of the house. Apparently she had gone to her car and uh, she was looking for something. And I asked her, hey Mel, did you come in here earlier? Mel, you scared me. You know, we're trying to figure out if somebody went out the back. I did. Because the porch light came on by itself. Oh, I didn't turn the light on. I don't think she remembers, but there was a crew that we were investigating with. They had to st uh, set up a static cam. And uh, sure enough, when they reviewed the static cam, it was Mel who walked in and she flipped on one of the light switches and it was the, uh, the porch light. Yeah, it was the porch light. Which goes back to our, um, yeah. you know, lesson number one, keep your crew together. <laughs> and you know what? Hey, look, we have a few beers. We enjoy coming yeah. out and exploring and, and, and having a good time. But uh, man, keep the alcohol down to a minimum. <laughs> you know, the few beers, it, it, it takes the edge off. We love uh, contributing to the local economy. Uh, that night, granted, they threw that party for us. But uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, we should have been more uh, cognizant yep. about our alcohol intake <laughs> and uh, walking around and, uh, you know, turning porch lights on. But it was, it, it, for a minute there, it was exciting. We thought we caught something, yeah. you know, unexplainable, something paranormal, but it was not. But anyway, all, all in all, it was a fun investigation. Uh, man, the brewery out here in Montgomery is freaking awesome. The uh, Texas Renaissance Festival, yeah. which happens not too far from around here. So, you know, if you're ever in the area, do yourself a favor yeah. and swing by the Lone Pine Brewery. Man, the beers here are excellent. The patio is amazing. Man, it's uh, good, good people, uh, good atmosphere, good environment, good beers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this trip flashback. Uh, let us know what you think. Hit that subscribe, hit the like, do all that good And uh, we'll see you out on the road again on the next Paranormal Road Trip. See you guys. It sounded like somebody's stomach. It sounded like a stomach. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 <laughs>